Hey, good day, tubers. So this is cell 48, I think, from memory. And again, watch the mess. I've taken it out of the system, so 48. The rest of the batteries are there, are sort of coming into balance from last weekend's video. Now, this one is an oddity. It wasn't charging up. It wasn't doing what it was supposed to do, right? After about two weeks, I could balance it all perfectly. And after about two weeks, it just starts ratcheting down till it gets about 0.1 of a volt lower than all the rest. Now, I thought that was kind of odd. I figured it was self-discharging, but I've used the IDST, ISDT, T8 to charge it back up again uh, with my trolling motor battery. And it's sat at, what is it, 4.1 volts for almost a week now. So it's definitely not self-discharging, but it's not charging up properly. Now, in the early days, I never used to do the internal resistance of any cell. Um, and in fact, this is six. So it stands to reason this is about the sixth one that I put into service. Um, and I made up a number of 2,400 milliamp hours was the, the average cells with inside of it. Um, yet it's still quite low. Now, on the positive side, now I'm not actually too concerned about this because it just seems to be solder or rather flux. Um, there's got all good fuses. There's no blown fuses in the whole pack. Now I don't have my uh, thermal camera with me to show you, but there's no heat in any of those cells. What I plan on doing today is popping all of the fuses off on the positive side and seeing if I can use this SM8142A battery analyzer. Um, and that does internal resistance testing. And it's a four pro it's a four wire unit. So it's got a couple of good probes. Now I've done a couple of thousand tests with this and that's never gonna focus, right? Um, there's what, 2,900 or so cells there. I've done all them in the last couple of days. And that took me a long time to do that. And that's one of the reasons why I've never done it. But I'm gonna pop, all the, pop them all off and then see if we've got any one zero volt cells. But if we've got a zero volt cell, it stands to reason that the actual um, fuses would be broken. But, and see if we've got any high resistance cells in there. And if we have got any high resistance cells, we'll pop them out with some newer ones uh, and put it back into service and see how it goes. Again, this is going to be a long test. It's not going to be a short one. So let's get that done quickly. And then I'll come back in a few minutes with some results. Okay, so all the fuses are off now. We're so free and clear. Now I'll go through and do the internal resistance test. Now I'm going to have to do it on both sides. I can't just do it to the bus bar on the negative and the cell. I'm going to actually have to do the cell itself. So let's time lapse that and see what we come up with. Okay, so one's 123. 124, 123. So just mark that one. So we do 123. That one's 49, not sure if you can quite see that. 61. Now this was, looks like a non-genuine cell. 49 you have to get both probes on both sides that one's got nothing Pressing nice and hard on that. I have to go back and look at the video. I might have done that one twice. Yeah, 
170. That's quite high. 70. Now to give you an idea, I did this with all these other cells and they're all in between 30 and 50. Okay, so conclusion to that 20 minutes of testing is um, either that's a really good device and fa it's fa I think it's fairly accurate. Once you get this to actually, um, you've got to put it on nice and square with even pressure. The overwhelming sort of sense I'm getting is these corroded ones were giving me a poor signal, uh, which is to be expected, even though these are very, very sharp. It would dig through that corrosion without a problem into the softer solder. Um, but also the solder itself could be giving a false a false reading as well. But what do you reckon? Um, that's like 80 bucks, I think, USD. Um, I think it's actually really good value. I think it'll help everybody's build process, uh, make better, stronger packs. Now in this one here, I didn't record it, but there was only four cells that were above 100, um, uh, 100 ohms of resistance. And this one here only had two cells that were over 100 ohms of resistance. Right, back again two days later. Um, I've gone through and replaced the three cells that were looking like they were poor, the high resistance ones, and also that fake cell. So I've put uh, the gray, just gray cells in, one, two, three. Um, they are fairly good for 3,100, 3,200 cells. <coughs> <coughs> um, but what I've taken away from all this is, well, I haven't taken away anything at all. I really don't know what caused this problem definitively um, what i can say is doing that test up front i think would have been a a reasonably good test i'm confident now as i wasn't before that doing internal resistance testing on all of your cells is more important than what i may have you know first thought but it's all back up and running again um, it's still a little bit high in voltage so that long one's going to have some work to do to get it back down uh, but we'll go put it back into service again. Ah, uh, well, there we go. She's back in service again. Uh, I'm not going to expect that long one to pull that much actual voltage back down again. So I put a couple of resistors on there. There's three resistors up there. They'll get quite warm. But they do the job very, very well. Um, they pull about one and a half amps, I think, those ones. So it's going to get that back down in a few hours. So happy with that. Anyway, tubers, um, I hope someone took something away from that. Um, I certainly didn't. Um, if I did something wrong, point it out. Would you pull that out of service or leave it in there? I'm happy to leave it in there. It's been in there for years now. May as well give it the life it deserves. Anyway, tubers, thank you very much for tuning in and I'll see you on the next one.